Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are gonna start a new module which is video analysis and here we are gonna start with motion analysis. Motion analysis is very important in the computer vision because in real life in many areas we are using motion analysis. For example in um, security systems, in defense industry, medical industry, um, also in autonomous vehicles. We are using in many areas in our real life this motion analysis. So this is very important. And here there are already two implemented methods in OpenCV library. So we are going to start with the KNM part. Uh, we don't need to know about the mathematical behind in this one. It's just uh, let us any movement in the camera is going to give us that information in some way. Okay. Um, also in the here actually there are three parameters this KNN uh, object is taking. The first one is the history. Uh, this is keeping the how much how many frames is needed to be hold in the other hand the second parameter is just keeping the threshold if you lower this one the default is 400 let's say if you make this 100 it's gonna detect the any movement so the accuracy we can talk about we can call also this threshold parameter detect shadows is actually if true it's gonna detect the shadows uh, in my in many projects of mine i'm not using this because it's most of the time giving wrong information we are gonna see how it's working in the code part also okay we can switch to the code part um i'm planning to use my camera because we need a video so i i don't want to use a recorded video already so i'm gonna call the video capture class and uh, here let's say cap and the zero is my camera id okay and I need a frame. Okay, also I'm gonna define some named windows because I want to uh, resize easily. The first one is the input, which is gonna be the zero enumeration and the other one is gonna be the output. Okay, um, this is the first thing we need to do also. We can call now the this KNN class, which is what was the name? Uh, background subtractor KNN. Okay, we are gonna call it background subtractor KNN. Okay, and is equal to CV create or yeah, CV create, but we need to name it so we can call it KNN is equal to CV create sub background subtractor KNN. Uh, we can run the code with the default parameters actually, but even I want to write again 500, 400 and true. So these are the default one, but I want to configure after the first try. So I'm just writing the defaults. And we are gonna call a while loop. Uh, I can break with the console, so I don't need to check any things for now. And cap is gonna get the frame. And all I need to do is just calling KNN.apply and the image is gonna be the frame and also I need the output so maybe it can be output frame and I'm gonna give that output and um, learning rate is defaultly minus one we don't need to deal with this now and we can call the im show um, the first is gonna be the input. I want to see my real camera out. And the second one is gonna be the output. Okay, and output frame. So I need to call wait key, CV wait key, and one. Seems everything fine for now. We can run the code and see the result. Let's run. Okay, okay. So you see me here, hi, and the right side is me, the left side is the output of the KNN. So let's talk about how this is working, how this output is coming. Um, you see I'm moving, my head is moving, you see some white and the gray uh, pixels around. The gray is the value is 127, the pixel value, and you see the uh, black pixels. The black pixel is representing there is no movement in that area. And the white is representing the real object is moving. Okay. Um, if I move my head, you will see some. Okay. You see my previous head. It was here. So it's going to be this appear if we will wait a little longer. But because of the parameter is really high, 400, 
is little taking time, but at the end it's disappeared. Okay. Um, basically, if anything move, it's showing white. You see, but even my hand is caused to some uh, shadows. The, by the way, this 127, this gray area is shadow. So you see, that's why I'm not using shadow much in my projects because most of the time it's giving wrong result. But to see the, maybe I need to first of all the decrease the threshold. Um, also, we are gonna talk about the history later, but the first one is can be maybe, um, let's say the threshold is 10, but it's gonna give me many wrong result. Um, yeah, so 10 is not a good choice, I think also. Maybe we can keep it 100. Okay. Um, okay, let me put to the right side and the left side. For the shadows, for example, I made some shadow uh, in my head side. You see the shadow and it's just showing that area gray. Even in my neck side, there is a shadow is showing gray color in that area. Shadow is mostly, uh, maybe I can say mostly working fine, but since this is not using an AI kind of model in the backend, so I'm not suggesting to use this uh, motion analysis class for shadow detection so most of the time i'm ignoring that so because uh, it's also creating some noises in the behind so i uh, in my cases i don't like to use that so now we only see the moving object without shadow okay we talk about the shadow now we can switch to the history what this history is meaning we always use 500 let's see if we use one what happened you at the beginning in the first try you will remember when I moved my head, uh, my behind is this area was not removing uh, faster, but now it was moving faster. So it's not keeping the history such longer. So it's keeping less history. Maybe you can think also for memory efficiency. If you don't need a huge history, you need to keep this value in the low case. Okay. This is uh, in the lower, lower value of... Uh, history we just use one but if you use really longer really high value it's gonna keep much also this is gonna be bad case for example let's use 500 again and in this case in my case my camera is constant so it's not moving it's not dynamic but if i let me little move my computer so my camera is gonna be moving also let's see so you see many uh, noise and it's not gonna back to normal faster. We need to wait a uh, little longer. So for both dynamic si uh, systems, the object is dynamic and the camera is dynamic. The usage case should be lower. For example, if I make one, let's see again, and I'm moving my camera, but it's updating so faster. Yeah in both dynamic cases and for uh, no need to keep in huge histories it's better to use this value low and we can keep it 500 this is the threshold value basically if i make it one you will understand clearly um, you see all of the white because it's detecting any pixel change so it's saying there is a movement here because there is a light, there is many conditions, shadows, it's always changing. If I put my cursor in here, you will also understand this cursor um, and you will see the result in the here, left and the bottom side. For example, this, I'm not moving my cursor, always the same coordinate, but you see RGB values are always changing. So it's detecting these small changes as uh, movement. Okay. So but if you make opposite in the opposite direction if you make this let's say 10,000 it's gonna uh, recognize the motion so difficultly for example uh, i'm moving my mouth it's detecting a little bit but yeah it's just trying to understand trying to get really huge movements um as i said at the beginning this is used for tracking systems for uh in the medical systems, in the autonomous vehicle systems. So these 
motion analysis is very important of course we use the simplest one but in the future videos maybe uh, i can create a project about the tracking at least so we can use this canon or mock2 mock2 is gonna be the next video content so uh, we can see how this uh, motion analysis is working in a real kind of project okay um, i'm done for this video thanks for watching see you in the next videos